Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing and sharing my own voices reflection on Blaze Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz. I'm reviewing this book as part of the book tour hosted by Hear Our Voices, so I'd like to thank Hear Our Voices for the chance to review this book. Now let me read to y'all the summary of this book because I do find it a bit challenging to put it in my own words. Lana Torres has always preferred dragons to people. In a few weeks, 16 countries will compete in the Blaze Wrath World Cup, a tournament where dragons and their riders fight for glory in a dangerous relay. Lana longs to represent her native Puerto Rico in their first ever World Cup appearance. And when Puerto Rico's runner, the only player without a dragon seed, is kicked off the team, she's given the chance. But when she discovers that a former Blaze Wrath superstar has teamed up with the Sire, a legendary dragon who's cursed into human form, the safety of the cup is jeopardized. The pair are burning down dragon sanctuaries around the world and refuse to stop unless the cup gets cancelled. All Lana wanted was to represent her country. Now, to do that, she'll have to navigate an international conspiracy that's deadlier than her beloved sport. I rated this book 3.5 stars. I had a lot of fun reading it. One of my favorite things about this book is that it actually delivers on the premise of dragons. So many fantasy books kind of tell you they're about dragons and then they play like a very small role in the story, but this is not the case with this novel at all. At the center of this story, we have dragons. The conflict is with a dragon and the dragons are the ones who are going to take a leading role in solving the issue that Lana is facing. So truly, this is a dragon fantasy novel through and through. If I have one complaint about the dragon element of this story, it would be that Lana herself isn't a dragon writer. But at the same time, that allows you to live vicariously through her because she has as much love and fascination with dragons as any dragon lover in the real world would. And also, while I'm still talking about the dragons, I fucking loved the Puerto Rican dragons. The Sol de Noche dragons were fucking badass. I adored them. I loved how powerful they were. I loved how well they worked together. Honestly, they were iconic. We love to see it. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this novel was the world building. It could be a bit heavy handed in the beginning of the novel, but I thought it progressively got more naturally imbued into the story. But in addition, the author also used the beginnings of chapters to kind of give you a little snippet of information about this world. She would have excerpts from novels that characters you know had written, or she would have interviews of relevant characters in the story, and it kind of helped to give additional information. It never felt like it was trying to tell me super mega important things in those chapter headers, but at the same time, it didn't feel like information that was wasted. It was definitely a good tool to give a little more in-depth information about the world while at the same time not feeling like the whole world building relied on that tool for world building. My biggest complaint about the novel is the characters. Those are the ones that really affected my rating from a four star to a 3.5 stars. One of them was Victoria. Victoria got on my nerves. That girl drove me insane. <laughs> she just wanted to go against everything that Lana did and said and it was annoying, okay? I needed her to chill. And I think especially one of the reasons why I wasn't super into Victoria's character is because it reminded me too much of that popular girl that doesn't want to associate with our main character and looks down on our main character. So it kind of led to these low-key girl hate vibes. It wasn't really that, but it reminded me of that, so that made me not be super into that. The other part is that because there's such a large cast of characters, I'm pretty sure Lana has six team members. It was a lot. You combine the six team members with the coach and the organizer and the president of the Blaze Wrath Games and a bunch of other people, and it was just too many people to handle. As a character driven reader, that was too much for me. I much prefer stories that focus on a very small group of characters so that I can really get to know them, but that didn't really happen in this book. Still, I did enjoy the characters. Don't get me wrong. I really, really liked some of the characters. I liked following Lana. As for the side characters, I really enjoyed Edwin and Carol and Andrew. 
they were fucking great, okay? They really were, but I honestly felt like I wanted to get to know them a bit better. But because there were so many characters and there was a lot of plot to get through, that we didn't really get that chance to know them as well as I would have preferred. Nevertheless, one of the character relationships that I really enjoyed was the dynamics that Lana had with her parents. She had very different interactions with her dad than with her mom, and I really enjoyed that. I especially liked how fraught the relationship was between Lana and her mom. Her mom pretty early on in the story just cuts off all connection with her, stops talking to her, stops everything, and that really affects Lana. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed having that tension in those parent-child relationships. I thought it brought something special to the story, especially since not all characters had as much development as I would have liked. Now, as an Own Voices reviewer, as a Puerto Rican reviewer who grew up in Puerto Rico and is now living in Chicago, I really enjoyed this story. I liked having a Puerto Rican main character in a fantasy novel, and not just a fantasy novel, but with dragons. Like, I'm like, that's perfect. I'm like, that's iconic. <laughs> And I really liked the fact that this used a common stereotypes about Puerto Ricans, but in a way that made sense. For example, there's a lot of times where the Puerto Rican flag is mentioned in this book. It really is mentioned quite a few times, but to me it made sense in the story because our main character is playing in this World Cup. So obviously all contestants are representing their own country, so all of them are going to uphold and really care about their flag, their country's flag. So I thought that made it seamlessly fit into the story while at the same time kind of hinting at that stereotype of Puerto Ricans being super obsessed with the Puerto Rican flag and always having a Puerto Rican flag. On the other hand, I do have to note that I got a bit irritated with the fact that this book does include immediate translations of the Spanish use and it just got a little bit on my nerves to have to see the Spanish and then immediately see See a literal translation of what was said. I'm like, please use context clues, please. But that's, that's personal preference. That's not really something against this book. It's just something that personally, I'm like, make your readers work for it. Please make them work for it. But it's fine. It's fine. It's just one of those little pet peeves that's unique to me. But going back to how this book is meaningful to me as a Puerto Rican reviewer, I definitely have to say that this was basically evidence to my teenage self that something like this could be published. When I was in high school, I was really, really into writing. I still am. I don't know why I'm saying that like in the past tense. I'm still a writer. I still love writing. But I definitely felt like an outsider because I wanted to write in English. I did not really want to write in Spanish. Although now I write a bit more hybrid stuff. At the time, I was really frustrated and I felt like no one really wanted to write fantasy in English, especially while in Puerto Rico because it was alien to me. I did not know of any novels that did that. I didn't know any authors that grew up in Puerto Rico who were writing from the island and who were choosing to write in English. Those were so limited that I felt like it wasn't something that could be real. So now seeing this book, having this book in my hands, having read it, it feels amazing. It feels amazing to know that it's happening. It's happening and it's possible. It's possible to do. And although now I would just be another writer writing from the diaspora, it's still meaningful to me that a Puerto Rican in the island could get their hands on this book and say, hey, other writers are doing what I want to do even from the island. So I think that's amazing and I really, really like that. And I really appreciated the experience of encountering that because honestly, without Hear Our Voices, I probably would never have heard about this book. I swear, I have a very, very hard time finding Puerto Rican authors, especially Puerto Rican authors writing fantasy. I know they're out there, I do, but it's very tough to find them. So having the opportunity to not only know about one of these books, but have the chance to read an advanced copy and review it was fucking incredible. I was stoked about it, super, super stoked. And I'm still super stoked that I was able to do this. 
And so finally, I kind of want to round out this review with reading one of the quotes from the book that I really, really enjoyed. It was a super cheesy quote, but I'm a fan of cheese, so cheesiness is always a good thing in books, at least on my account. This comes close to the end of the novel, but don't worry, it's not spoilery, but it's something someone says to our main character, Lana. That fire in here, she taps her chest where her heart is. That's all Puerto Rico. You might not have strong memories of the island, but it will never forget you. What do I have to say? What do I have to say? It's great. It's great. I love it. We love to see it. So yeah, I would definitely, definitely recommend picking up this book. I really enjoyed it. I am super looking forward to whatever else this author publishes. I saw so much potential in the writing of this story and I can't wait to see how this author develops her craft and keeps becoming an even better author. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, I will leave the links to that down below in the description. But for now, see you next time.